Is that a breakup? Break I think we have a situation right here. Hi, Tinto. Hey, what, what's happening? How you doing? I'm fine, and you? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing very well. Excited that we're doing the recording today. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go too far, I need to let you know that uh, I'm recording an episode for the Feeling Station. So please do your best not to say your name, okay? Okay, I won't. If you do accidentally say your name, I will have some work in post production. Um, mm -hmm. So you won't need to worry about your name ever coming out. Okay, cool. Sounds great. Now, for those listening to this podcast for the first time, it touches on breakup stories that people would like to talk about with a view to give you, the listener, a lesson that you can learn from or others that you know to learn from. And so we, um, before we get too far, I need to give you a name in the normal tradition okay. of the podcast. Are you ready for that? Yes. So the name that I have for you stems from Senegal. Okay. And the name is Aminata. Aminata. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, and that name means truthful, trustworthy, or faithful. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> I feel honored. <laughs> you know, which are really nice qualities for somebody to have. Now, wow. in the story that you're going to tell me today, who was truthful, trustworthy, and faithful? Was it you or it was the guy that you were with? I would say it was me. Oh, yeah? Yes. I'm definitely Aminata. You'll, you'll hear the story and, <laughs> and judge for yourself. Okay. Now, this is the time when you give me the name that you want to give the guy you want to talk about. Okay. So, um, I have been thinking about a name and it just popped like short, like maybe a minute ago or two <laughs> minutes ago. Right. And before you called. I would like to call him Usacheoke. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it's got a um, pretty good meaning. Usacheoke. Yeah. Well, well, what does that mean for those who don't understand, uh, Shona? Usacheoke is a word Yeah, in Shona mm -hmm. that means do not turn back. Okay. So, cheoka is turning mm -hmm. back. Usacheoke is like do not. Okay. Do not turn back. That's, do that's, not turn back. That's, that's a really nice name and I like the meaning behind that. Yes. So we're going to crack straight into this uh, story that you have. I'm, uh, I'm guessing you have some lessons that you want people to learn. Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Um, I do have. Let's crack on with the first one. Okay. So um, the first lesson I have is if a person shows you who they are from mm. the beginning, believe them. I'm okay. sure this is something people often hear, believe somebody's true colors if they, if they show them to you from the from the on start, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So that's one lesson. The other lesson would be if a person rejected you in the past and they never respected you in the past, they probably never will. So don't think that time will guarantee you changed behavior. Ooh, wow. So this is the other lesson. And another one would be for the ladies and for men as well, do not be desperate enough to ignore your intuition. So Ooh. always pay attention to those red flags. Your intuition you know, you feel it, you know it. So, you know, act upon it. Yeah. Y you know, your intuition is pretty much your gut, isn't it? Yes. And then the last lesson I have would be, beware of toxic people, beware of narcissistic behavior. <laughs> so, so I know, okay, I, okay. I would say like, you know, beware of toxic people that are self-centered and, and do not have empathy for anyone. Mm. And also you should beware of, 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 of men if when it comes to women they should be aware of men that actually hate women but it's a bit hidden so as for men it could be they should be aware of women who actually hate men wow so there are flags and maybe they will come out throughout the story and, yeah. and these lessons will will be readable jeez those are really deep lessons you know i'm just going to play those back to you so the first lesson is if, if someone tells you who they are you know best believe them um, yes. Second one, if you are rejected in the past, don't expect it to change. Uh, third yes. lesson, pay attention to your gut uh, slash your intuition. And the fourth lesson, beware of toxic people. Exactly. Ooh. Yes. Okay, right. Let's get cracking. Where did you and uh, Usa Cheoke meet? So uh, me and Usa Cheoke, we met uh, in high school. Mm -hmm. So I uh, changed high schools and um, I was new in his, um, his school. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, we met and we were like teenagers. And mm -hmm. yeah, he, 
I was literally connected through a home girl of his. So she was like, oh, I want you to meet my, my homeboy. And we just had a chat and it just became like a friendship. And then, but the energy was just strong. And then yeah. after, maybe after a term or so, it was official. <laughs> you became boyfriend and girlfriend. Yes. And that went on throughout high school until mm-hmm. the end. Mm-hmm. Yes. So when you say high school, I'm guessing, uh, is this when you were about 14? Yeah, 14, 15, yes. Okay. So did you guys continue after high school? Yeah, we uh, we actually did continue after high school because he was he was my senior. So mm-hmm. he left high school first mm-hmm. and then he went to do his A-level somewhere else. But we did have a relationship. And then when I finished high school, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's when it, it ended. But it did continue after high school, even though we, had, we were now in separate schools when he had finished his lower like his his o levels yeah. and he went to a level in another school we still met at home mm-hmm. yes so so i mean you guys are pretty much high school sweethearts from the sound of things exactly the perfect couple like the inseparable like we're inseparable wow. ever since we, we we got together um i never dated anyone throughout like that 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 school time really? and he also never dated anyone until we finished Okay, so a high school came and went. Um, uh, did you, did you guys go to university? Yes, so we did. We did go to university. So one thing is, he finished A level first, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, I was going to A level. Mm-hmm. So um, when he left to go to, he had to go to another country to to study. That's mm-hmm. when he broke up with me. So he 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 literally left me. Because I was no longer, I was no longer enough. Like he was going to another country to start his life afresh and he didn't, he probably saw me as baggage. So did you break up with you just before he left or he broke up with you after he had already gone? He broke up with me right before he left. Okay. So we we always had a toxic relationship more or less like this, this, what can I say? A bad romance, you know, we would hurt each other, We, you know, even as teenagers, like, you know, I would talk to other guys, he would talk to other women, and he was from a really wealthy family, so mm-hmm. he was from, yeah, so he had access to all these girls chasing after him, so we yeah. always would find out things about one another, I always used to hurt one another, mm-hmm. also just to test how the other one loves the other, so by the time he had to leave and go to college, he, the reasons for breaking up were like, yeah, you know, we... We are both not honest. We're both toxic. It doesn't really work. <laughs> <laughs> I want to find out something. You obviously listed some of the things that he did that weren't good. What are some of the things that you did that weren't good during that time? Okay, so some of the things... Okay, so I would... Whenever we broke mm-hmm. up, I would rush to talk to those guys that were always <laughs> lingering in the background. Okay. So those men that I, yeah. those boys that I knew liked me and were always lingering and waiting, those were the first people I would run to. But that wouldn't be such a bad thing because you are no longer with the guy, right? So you, you are open to other suitors. Yes, but then we always knew that if we break up, it's not going to last. So it's, it's those kind of fake breakups. Oh, you break okay. up, but you know you will get back together and everybody knows. Right, gotcha. Yeah, so I would always, and more or less, uh, what other things that I do? I used to be really confrontational yeah. with, you know, the women that liked him. You know, I was an advocate. I would be like, you know, he doesn't want you. He's my man. Uh, you know, I would be really all possessive and like, yeah, protective of my property. You sound like you're quite the feisty character. Um. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. Yeah? What's, what's changed now? <laughs> The fact that I no longer feel the need to 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 defend myself or to justify my deservingness. Why do I deserve this man? Why do I deserve love? Why do I deserve respect? Why do I deserve a man for myself? Yeah. I no longer feel the need to explain and to fight off competition. Okay. It's either mine or not. Oh, right. That, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Yes. So back to the story here. Yeah, he leaves and uh, he goes off to university and then uh, I'm, I'm guessing you, you remained... In your, in your country, is that right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I remained in my country and then I left maybe, yeah, I left like uh, two years later mm-hmm. or a year and a half later. I left for for another continent, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he was in a neighboring country of our uh, okay. the country we grew up in. So, okay, right, gotcha. 
So, so you guys still had distance between you because you went off to a completely different continent. Exactly. Yes, okay. and we didn't. Um, we didn't. Yeah, we did have communication actually, but it was just basically hi hi and just having each other over Facebook and all these social medias. Like there was Facebook then, mm-hmm. so we would chat on Facebook and then we had WhatsApp. We would just have a contact, but at a distance. And he yeah. was obviously seeing people, and mm-hmm. I was seeing people where I was, and it was over. But you know how you just keep your enemies, in, close. you know, in close range. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So so that so that's what you were playing at with them. Keep your enemies close. Yeah, and and but there were there were no feelings at all. Like for me, I had accepted it was over. He rejected me, mm-hmm. and he he's obviously enjoying his life where he is as a student. You know, from a wealthy family with all this money, he was known at the campus where he was for being lavish and spending money on girls and having a big nice car. Mm-hmm. So he was really enjoying the time of his life where he was. Did that make you jealous? Oh, uh, what can I say? Uh, I didn't really care. Are you sure? But it hurt me so much when he left me because I knew it wasn't because we had hurt each other. Yeah. I knew it was because he was an opportunist. He had he had looked, okay, this country I'm going to, they're going to be young, hot girls from, you know, different tribes and different this. And I get to go there with a brand new car from my parents. I'm going to go on campus, have okay. my residency paid. I'm going to enjoy and party. I don't need this little, I don't need Aminata. Yeah. She is, you know, breadcrumbs. I yeah. need the the real thing. Yeah. So so did yes. you guys reconnect somewhere along the lines? Okay, so we reconnected mm. 10 years later. 10 years later. <laughs> so like 10 years later. I think 10, 11, yeah. Between Whoa. 10, 11 uh, years later. What triggered your reconnection? So, um... I had not been talking to him because I was I was in relationships also some of the years and he he too. Mm-hmm. And then there came a time where, okay, I was single and then I don't know, I had him somewhere on WhatsApp and then uh, I was traveling to our country where we grew up. Mm-hmm. And um, he was like, ah, I've now moved back. Mm-hmm. So he had moved back from that other country where he was. He was now living in the country where we grew up. And I was like, oh, okay, so we can link up. And he was like, yeah, we should link up and, you know, just ha- just meet and, and, and talk. So when I traveled mm-hmm. and I got home, he was like, oh, let's meet up. And when we met, we met, of course, to just talk, have a cocktail. But then after meeting two, three times, there was just this magic. Mm-hmm. There was just something rekindling. Like there was just this fire that 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 was, was you know, this it was just starting again. And, and and it would happen naturally because you guys had really good chemistry when you were in high school, right? Exactly. And the fact that we also believed we were grown up now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you there yes. for, for, for just a holiday? Yeah, I was just there for, for a holiday. Yeah? Just visiting my family, spending time. And then, yeah, he ended up like occupying a lot of my time. So is there a possibility that because you knew you were on holiday, it was like a holiday fling for you more than it was just... The old flame reigniting. For me, I don't think it was. It was not, I wouldn't say it was a holiday fling because I was also writing with other people that I was meeting each time I went home. Mm -hmm. So it was really something different. I really felt it in my core. Like it was just not infatuation, not okay, let me enjoy now and and, and I'll, you know, I'll never see you again or whatever. Mm -hmm. I felt something Okay. And, and and you felt the same? He felt the same. Like even he was like, oh my God, you know, the way I'm <laughs> feeling, <laughs> this mm-hmm. is just so crazy. I'm feeling excited. I'm feeling in love. And it just took meeting twice, you know, oh, wow. three times to hang out, to to feel this energy. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, so then we 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 hung out a lot, and for us it was really easy because we had been together before for years. We had dated for for years, for yeah. like maybe three and a half years, almost four years. Yeah, yeah. When we were teens, so it was just natural. We're like, okay, we like what's going on, mm-hmm. and so something happened. So we we got intimate, and then yeah, intimacy literally just opened the the door to to the relationship. So it just started promptly, like. Yeah, after we got intimate, it was clear. Had you guys been intimate before? Yeah, we had been intimate before. So why was this intimacy that special? 
to open up the door to say, okay, this is official when it's something you'd done before? Uh, well, doing it before, I mean, when we were younger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then now, 10 years later, we are grown up, we're all mature, we're no longer hiding and sneaking from parents and from family, and now we can actually own our... It was, it was, it, it was special. I, I, I still don't understand why it was more special. Was it more special because you are now more mature and you understand what it really means to do it and you're not just doing it as younger people would normally do it, say, for fun. You're doing it exactly. because you know you're emotionally connected and this is not just because you just want to have fun. Yes, also, okay. also. Yeah, that now you're no longer, what can I say, you don't have that thirst, you are already exposed. Okay, right. And now you really know when you're doing such things, it's because, yeah, you want to, and, and the person is right, and the time is right, yeah. and it's not a hobby, it's not boredom, it's not yeah. sneaking from anybody, it feels right. Okay, right. I, I totally get that now. Okay, so you guys get intimate, and then, yeah, this is this is confirmed that, okay, it's on. And then what happened? So, okay. Things went real quick. So just mm -hmm. from this intimacy, he was already introducing me to his family again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't know them from back then, but now he was reintroducing me to his family and he was talking about, oh, we should get married. Mm -hmm. And so he told his family already that we want to get married. I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, <laughs> I'm not married. Wow. You're not married. Why not? Mm -hmm. We're mature. Why not? So then he was introducing me to his family you know, and he was like, yeah, we should. So we were thinking about getting married. Mm -hmm. But he never proposed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But but I was already going to the aunties to meet them. You know, it went really fast. Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't take it didn't take four or five months. I mean, I, I did travel back after mm -hmm. we had connected. Mm -hmm. And when I came back again, I was now meeting his family, you know, like officially. This is the woman I want to marry her. This, that. Um, yeah. That is very interesting. How how quickly things changed and and you get Oof. you know reconnected like this. So what I mean, what started going wrong then? Where did things start falling apart? Okay, so what happened was I had traveled back. So once um, I had uh, visited home, we had reconnected. I went back again, mm -hmm. and then when I went. Back again the third time because I was now going to that country even more regularly because now I had a relationship. So instead of going twice a year, I was now going like four times a wow. year, right? Yeah. So when I went, um, yeah, so before I went back like the third time, he mm -hmm. had cheated on me. And, and how did you find out? So what he did was he went somewhere, had sex with a woman, and he got into his car on a Sunday morning. Yeah. And he called me and I was in the gym and he called me and he's like, yeah, um, I'm just loading my car because I'm going to go to the farm. So I'm just, you know, loading my car and doing stuff. And then he forgot to cut his phone. So he just put his phone in the car, you know, where in those little compartments where oh, you put yeah, your yeah, cards yeah. and the coins. Yeah, yeah. So I think he just put his phone there and it, he, he didn't cut the call. Mm -mm. And I thought it was a DJ who was talking. So there was a woman's voice. So later on, the doors closed. I was in the gym listening. There's also music in the gym, you know, and I was just busy cross-training and like, mm. you know, sweating and like, you know, jumping on that um, mm. machine. And so then I thought it was a female DJ talking. <laughs> like, uh, uh, so she, had a, she had such a pleasant voice, you know, like yours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she had this pleasant voice like this one that you have. So I thought it must be a, a, a female DJ who's addressing issues, like talking mm. about issues on, on the radio. Mm -hmm. And... Until she said, usually I don't come, but with you, it was so easy. Then you're like, nah, this can't be a radio No, no, then I added the volume. Then I added the volume. Because I, I actually didn't cut the call because um, I had it connected to my, to, my, to my Bluetooth. And the phone was actually like in the machine. So I was mm. waiting for him to cut. And he didn't cut the call. So I was just hoping he will cut soon. And then my music resumes, right? Yeah. And then I yeah, and then she says, Oh, usually I don't come, but with you it was so easy. And then he started saying, Yeah, it was good. You know, long distance relationships are hard. You know, every now and then you need some sex. But Whoa. yeah, thank you. It was good. So he's thanking her. So obviously she knows that you're in the picture. 
She, yeah, she knew. So he had told her that he he's getting married. He's got a woman who is pregnant and expecting a baby who is in the diaspora. And then he started telling her, complaining about me. So can you imagine? He has just cheated on me with a woman, and he starts telling this woman, "Well, uh, Aminata thinks that I am fat and I need to work out." She's telling me I'm going to have a heart attack and leave her with the kids. Um, so she's saying I should work. When it's true, he was a bit overweight. Yeah. And that's not usually my type of men that are, you know, couch potato, fat and short and with a belly. But was he always a couch potato? I don't know what happened to him. I okay. think he was not always in so when we were in high school he was very athletic. He was mm-hmm. he was very fast. He was very muscular. He was athletic. He used to run really fast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then now when we were grown up, you know, he never grew taller. And he, he gained weight. <laughs> he, he stops growing. <laughs> that's that's funny. <laughs> you obviously went past puberty, and once you hit that spot, you stop growing. <laughs> oh my uh, god! And I never got to experience hmm. him grow because I, I was gone, and oh, and, and wow. he was gone. So I never, I never experienced him growing. Yeah. You know, because you grow until you're twenty what, twenty one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so he so, just stopped growing, and then he just became fat, and and, and you didn't like that. that. Fat, Whoa. like like literally your head and your neck, they're one piece. Like, you know, your your nose just falls into your cheeks. <laughs> and you know, everything is, uh, I'm sorry, but unfortunately. Wow. Okay. okay. So, so unattractive. Yeah. So they're having this conversation um, and you're hearing all of this. Yes. I, I mean, that's a lot to take in, especially when I you're that far. For, I listened for 52 minutes. Whoa. So he was now saying to her, yeah, she's ungrateful. And she was telling him, oh, well, these are the kind of women that are controlling. They want to tell you what to do with the baby, all this, that. So he starts disrespecting his potential, his future wife. Mm. So you're cheating on your future wife and then you sit with a person who you met at some mobile provider and you met with them for sex and you're now complaining about your future wife. So Mm. this was Red flags, definitely. Mm. Definitely red flags. And when I connected to the call again, he noticed. He now noticed after 50 minutes that I was on the call. Then I said, you know what? You might as well keep that woman who you're with. Then he said, oh, what, what is wrong? What are you saying? He, had, he thought that I had just gotten onto the call because another direct call had come in. Yeah. When he picked the direct call, it, after the direct call, it reconnected again, the WhatsApp call. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. he thought I had just called, you know, just a minute ago. Oh, and then dear. he said, Oh, what's the problem? Um, the I just have people in my car that I've just been giving that I just gave a lift. They're coming from church. What's mm, wrong? Mm, mm. And I said, Look, please, in your call log, how long I've been listening. And then he noticed I'd been listening for so he was even ready to lie to me that he just carried people from church because he thought I had just called a minute ago. Wow. So he was ready to disrespect me with the with a woman who he, he has just cheated on me with, and then let alone lie to me that instant. And she was still sitting in the car while he's lying to me. So he went on to lie. He he didn't even try and say sorry. Oh, you've just caught me. So then he looked and he noticed. Oh my God, she was listening for fifty two minutes. That's when he knew he was busted. And what did he say? So then he he was trying to call me, call me. Ah, sorry, you don't understand. And I just said, don't talk to me. So he now gave all his relatives my number. His uncles started calling me, saying, "Oh, we are so disappointed." The mother told me, "I'm gonna beat him up. I'm so disappointed." <laughs> the How old was he at the time for him to get an ass whooping? How old was he? He was he was over thirty. <laughs> And they, okay, right. <laughs> they said they're so disappointed. Mm. So then they were begging me. So he's sending his relatives to beg me for his misbehavior. How did you feel with all those people contacting you to to beg you for for mercy and forgiveness? Well, I kind of felt bad, but then I thought, I thought this is a cycle that's opening. Like if he's gonna be wronging me, then all these people are gonna be coming to me to beg me. Yeah. And I ended up forgiving him, of course. Why did you forgive him? Well, the thing is, after he did that, I went and hooked up with somebody because I was like, oh my God, okay, if he can hook up with people and do this to me, then I don't need to be waiting here and suffering. 
So okay. I went and hooked up with someone um, from my past, but that was just once. And that that's what helped me kind of be like, okay, quits. We are, we're quits. It's okay. You're like, it's, it's now fair and square. It's now even. You cheated once, I've done the same. Yeah, and I, but I didn't tell him. I just I just kept quiet. So, so I have a question for you. Uh, within this conversation so far, you mentioned he was saying, oh, yeah, you know, I'm getting married and, you know, she's pregnant. She's going to have my, my kids and blah, blah, blah. Yes. Were you actually pregnant? No, I was not. <laughs> I was. So, so why was he saying that? Well, he was saying that, well, what he explained to me was he had told her that so that because she was a single mother with two children and she didn't want to give her any hope so he had to make it really intensive like he had to really make it serious so that she doesn't think that she can ever ever have any chance with him (laughs) this guy (laughs) wow yeah so he had to make it look like you know there's no chance for us i I want to use you of course but you should you know because many women do get hope you know once a man is sexually active with them yeah and they listen and the man listens to them they they do get hope that you know what she could be the one i'm here he's here why not so he just wanted it to be very clear that this is not going anywhere yeah i think that's what m- many men usually do if they want to drive off a woman if they don't want a woman to get too comfortable they will they will let her know her place like you know there's already someone do you know strangely enough some women find that to be attractive that they see it as competition and they see it as all the reason to try and outdo the other woman. I guess so. That's why she was probably saying that I, 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 I'm I, the kind of woman that would tell him not to. And she, she even said to him, well, you don't need to lose weight because you, you, you fuck good. Wow. So what's the problem? That's what she was saying in the car. She said, what's her problem? You fuck good. Oh, dear. Can you imagine? Talk about stroking his ego, huh? <laughs> So, yes. so, so right. Uh, back to the story then. So then you you cheated, and then you're like, okay, nah. Um, you know, let's let let's get back together. I forgive you. Yeah. So I forgave him. Mm-hmm. I forgave him. And then when I went, so then when I when I traveled back again uh-huh. to see him, uh-huh. um, I was like, you know, I had even told him like months before, like you know, I had told him eight weeks before, like you know. I'm coming. I'm coming in eight weeks. I would like to go to 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 Victoria Falls. Mm-hmm. And he was like, "Yeah, okay, we'll see when you come." So after all this cheating on me, lying, deceiving me, I I, I travel again to the country where we grew up, and I'm like, "I want to go to Victoria Falls." And he never made a plan. He made no effort to secure this relationship, despite all this mess that he had caused. He did not even try to take me on a trip to go and see this wonder, right? What was his reason for, for not arranging that? He said, I don't have the money. So my dad didn't put the money in my account. I don't have any money. And you, if you want to take your, if you want to go to Victoria Falls, you can take yourself. If the person has the money, they can just go. So he was very arrogant and used to talk in the third person. Because if a person wants that, they should just do it. It, it sounds like he was distancing himself. He was not distancing himself. He was arrogant. And he, and he felt like, okay, you are coming from another continent where you are better off there. So you can afford this trip. Why do you want the trip? Like, why don't you just pay and go on the trip? Instead of saying, you know, humbly saying, I am broke. Yeah. I would have loved to take you, but I am broke. Yeah. But also, yeah. he do, this it's broke is no excuse. It's effortlessness. And effortlessness is laziness for me. Yeah. So I would have translated that that brokenness into effortlessness. Why do you have no effort? Because you're lazy. And why are you lazy? Because you don't appreciate what you have. I would have derived a lot of things from that behavior, which yeah. I did. And I felt disappointed. So so did you go for the trip or, or on your own or you just decided to stay? No, I just decided to stay. But, but, but you know, it, <laughs> it is just unfortunate. When you're having a distance relationship, this is one thing women are not quite conscious of. When you have a distance relationship with somebody, they save a lot of money taking you to trips, picking you up from work with the car, delivering food for you at home, mm-hmm. taking you out on the weekend, doing you know couples uh, retreats and things like that. Mm-hmm. This person saves a lot of money by being at a distance relationship with you. Yeah. So by the time they see you after three months, they should have organized something you yeah. cannot not have organized nothing and you say you want to marry that woman so was he generally stingy was he 
one of those guys who doesn't spend on 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 their women. No. Oh no, he spent on women. When he was telling me about his ex girlfriends, he told me that he had spent on them. He had taken care. He was with a, a girl from another country. He had taken care of that girl. She was like a school girl, a, a college girl. He was paying her tuition. He was driving. He even knocked out his car because he would drive miles and miles and miles for that ex. He would pay bills for that ex. But he wasn't doing any of this for you. No, because when I met him, he was now broke. So the days where he was in that country where the parents were paying for his tuition, he had a lot of money. But when he finished, they now said, you have to find your own way. So he had to go and work and pay his bills and pay whatever he had to do. And he could not sustain the lifestyle he wanted. So he was literally broke and had failed. And his relationship with the women from the other countries, they used to cheat on him. They used to lie to him. So it, his relationships also failed. So he had no choice but to go back to his mother country. Yikes. So when I met him, he was already a failure. But I didn't read those signs. Yeah, yeah. This is a man who's only with me because he has failed. He ideally would have wanted to be with a certain kind of woman. Yeah, I mean, but that was... because he has failed. That was going to be my next question uh, to say, do you think... Um, he decided to come uh, back to you because, <clears throat> excuse me, because his circumstances had changed and, and you've just answered that. Exactly. Because when we were younger, his circumstances had changed and he had upgraded his life. So mm. I was no longer fit. So this time he was now broke and a mess. And I am now in another continent. I am now upgraded. I'm now educated, you know, yeah. and I have more resources and I have no, I have less body count because the country I am in is isolated and I have not really had that many sexual partners yeah. throughout the decade that yeah. he has. Yeah. So yeah. he knew, okay, this woman has not been scandalous. Uh, so she has a good reputation. So mm -hmm. good so far. She's now educated. She's now upgraded. And now I am the opposite. I'm now a failure. Yeah. I, I think he didn't even finish his honors. I think he must have done maybe just a... I don't know. He, he, he didn't. So he was now a failure, gone back to this mother country, no income. The parents were the ones supporting him. He's living at his parents' house, mm -hmm. over 30. Mm -hmm. So, and I was like, okay, since he's from a very wealthy family and he says he runs errands for his dad, I was like, okay, he's going to be fine and he's yeah. got a farm. Yeah. So he's going to be fine. Just just going back to your to, to your lessons, I, <clears throat> I know the first one is that if somebody tells you who they are, best believe them. So who had he told you he was during this time? What what was he saying to you? I know obviously now I can sense he's an arrogant guy. And I've also picked up that his, uh, he seems to be a, a serial cheater. Exactly. So he had shown me from the beginning that he was an arrogant person. Mm. He was arrogant, he was not humble, like he was just a toxic person. The way he talks about others, other guys that are doing well in our mother country, you know, he would always find something to say about them. Something negative. Would, or always try to blame his failure on someone else, like on his mm. father not investing enough in him. Or he he would always try to 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 to, to blame somebody for, for, for what he has become. So if somebody can show you, like he showed me who he was, like somebody who is not accountable. So because, uh, you know, he's telling you all these things and just going back to another one of your lessons where it says pay attention to your gut. Mm -hmm. Your gut was obviously telling you something because he's doing a few things that are not right. He's not spending on you. He's not showing you like he cares. He's not making effort. He's cheated on you. At that point, your gut was obviously screaming something to you. What was it saying to you? So my gut was telling me, like, run. This person, they are not even your type, as in physically. I didn't care about the physical part because I, I felt magic inside. But I was thinking, one, do I really want to have offspring with a person who is optically not my type? No. Number two, <laughs> wow. this person... Wow, that is <laughs> This crazy. person left me, left me when I needed them. Mm -hmm. They left me... You know, they rejected me when I needed them for an opportunity. This person is an opportunist. They are trying to escape poverty through me. This is what my gut was telling me. That this person doesn't love or respect me. They want an opportunity to come out of poverty. As in the country they are stuck in. They want to leave that country. They want to go abroad. But why were you so sure that's what he wanted to do? 
Did he ever say I want to come to where you are? No, because he was saying that he is supposed to go abroad. The parents, even the parents had told the parents told me that yeah, once you guys get married, you can choose the country you guys want to go to. You can go to Canada, you can go to Australia. You guys should just make a plan and we will support you guys to go together. So the parents were only willing to support him if he was married to somebody reasonable. Okay. Which I, I turned out to be a reasonable woman. I uh, see. Uh, an, so so he always wanted to 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 get away but they never trusted to to help him alone. Yeah, yeah. So bringing an amazing woman mm-hmm. made his image look better so the parents were more willing to help him. Yeah. So yeah. I was his one way ticket to paradise. That now makes a lot of sense. And through all of this your gut is pretty much telling you don't do it, don't do it, you know. This he is told not me, right. Don't don't so, do it. So I guess my next question is did you stay in the relationship then even though your gut was telling you all this stuff? So, um, the relationship ended up crumbling. So I traveled to go to another continent. I traveled to go to Australia. So when I was telling him I'm traveling to go to Australia just to tour and to, to just relax a little bit, Mm -hmm. he was busy hating on my trip. He said, I don't need to go there. I'm wasting money. And if I'm going there, I'm going to meet men and I'm going to try to do what happens in Australia stays in Australia. And then he's going to have to marry such a woman. So he was so judgmental and so toxic and so hateful about me traveling the world. I earned it. That, it's uh, my that, right. That, that sounds to me like he was, uh, he was coming across as jealous, but it's okay to be jealous. Jealous, but, you know, if you are not giving me the money to, to take that trip, mm-hmm. then don't, don't plan for my money. You do what you do with your money. Don't tell me what's a waste when it's my money. So I get the feeling that at this point you guys were seeing yourselves as two different individuals, okay? So I'm Aminata, I've got my money, you are Usache, okay, you've got your own money. Do what you want with yours, I do what I want with mine. But you're working to become husband and wife. So my, I mean, if I'm Mm -hmm. looking from the outside at this point, the two of you should now be talking about our money, not your money and your money, right? (laughs) He had no money. He had no money. Wow. He had no money. It's just the parents are wealthy, but he's living with his parents. He has no income. The father is the one who gives him income for running errands. But he literally had no money, no money to even do anything except just put fuel in a car and buy fast food. He had no money for nothing. Wow. So I could not plan anything with someone who has no money. I've got a question for you. Yes. Were you at least willing to help him get money somehow? Well, I was willing to help him get money. I even came up with some business ideas that I gave him that I said, you know what? You could ask your dad to invest in you in this area. You know, we could, we even went to inquire about shipping and I was thinking, you know, we could actually buy this, this, and ship it home and do this, 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 this. Mm. I was giving him ideas, but why should I give a man vision who has none? Well, because he's going to be your, your husband and sometimes everybody needs a little bit of a push. Yeah, that's true. But only yeah. he who deserves a push is one who is also loyal and has earned it. But he was not faithful. He was not honest. And he was very toxic and very arrogant and very hateful. So why should I, why, why should I invest? So were you punishing him for that? I was not punishing him. I just felt distant because I felt this person is undeserving of me. And the relationship also crumbled like that because he was so hateful. And he said, yeah, then then whatever. I don't care. It's over. And then I said, okay, then good luck. And then months later, he came back again and he said, oh, my mother said... I should come back and talk to you. We know we des- we should be together. You know, we're such a good couple, all this, that. And I said, okay, then. But then I was never paying attention to him. And it just ended up ending because I didn't care anymore. Let's talk about forgiveness. Yeah. So you forgave him, right? Because he cheated and he never knew that uh, you, you were with somebody else. My understanding of forgiveness mm-hmm. is that you wipe things off and start on a clean slate. It doesn't mean you've forgotten. You always remember. But forgiving yeah. means that you got a clean slate um, and you try and do things together from the ground up. It doesn't yes. feel like he was getting that chance. You were already very focused on how well you're doing and how you're doing everything right and he just wasn't doing the same. I don't feel you were ready to to, to, mm-hmm. to, to work with him. I was. You have no idea. I really invested 
a lot of time and energy to even mm. talk to somebody's father and mm. tell the person's father that look at your son's future. If yeah. you do not invest in him, he has nothing to give a wife. I went to the extent of telling his father this wow. one on one to and tell his father, you need to invest in him because he cannot give me anything. We want to settle down. We want to get married, but he has nothing. And the father was like, okay, choose the country you, you want to go to. And I will, I will support you guys to go there. They knew he was a ticking bomb. They knew that their son was... And look, this person is a Seventh-day Adventist who is alcoholic, who drinks and drives, who smokes, and who has asthma, but... Sm- what's a, what's a Seventh-day Adventist for the benefit of those who, who don't understand? So Seventh-day Adventists are people that, that instead of Sunday worship, mm-hmm. they consider Friday and Saturday as, you know, the time of worship and you know resting, staying away from work. And 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 so and so, why was it important to mention that he drinks and he smokes? Do do, do Seventh Day Adventists not drink and smoke? Yeah, because Seventh Day Adventists, it's forbidden okay. for them to drink alcohol, for them to smoke and to eat pork. And he used to do all that stuff and to eat pig meat. And this is this is unbelievable. So it sounds like he's the kind of guy who goes against the grain for a lot of things. He lived a contradictory life. And this is what I'm saying. All these red flags, like being mm. toxic, hating, hating the woman you say you love. You hate what she does. You hate that she is trying to, to be ambitious and she's doing well. And just hating on your family, hating on your friends that are doing well. You hate on everybody and you live, you contradict your, your religion, the religion you grew up in. You know, you contradict that and you do exactly the opposite of, of your family. Like you are a... I don't know, black sheep yeah. or your rebel. Yeah, yeah. One of the uh, one of the lessons you touched on, which is the fourth one, is that if you're rejected in the past, it won't change. So, mm-hmm. when were you rejected? So he rejected me when we were when we were teenagers. Yeah. When he left to go to another country to go to college, and he and and. He broke up with me and I was begging him, like, you know, we can make this work. Even if you're gone, we can make this work. We don't need to break up. And he said, no, 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 this is the, your time is up now. It's over. Wow. It's really over. And he went to the extent of even sleeping with me, even though he had broken up with me, he still slept with me before he left. I mean, the thing is, he had to ask. Yeah, yeah. So he he, he said, because I was crying, like, oh, please. And he was like, okay, then, yeah, let me think about it. And then he slept with me, but his mind was already made up. Why did you allow him to sleep with you at that point? I don't know because I thought I thought it would it would help the relationship because he said he's thinking about it, but I knew his mind was made up, and he and despite sleeping with me, he still left. He still left unapologetically. Well, I'm 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 going to come back to that one actually because you just said to me that you did it because you thought it would change his mind, and, and then in the same breath you said you knew that it made up his mind. So why did you really do it? <laughs> So you feel and you know that it's really over because the way they're breaking up with you, the way they're saying it, they've never said it before like that. Mm -hmm. So you really feel that "Mm, this is the end of the road. But, okay, you sleep with them because you feel, you know, sex has always been a thing that bonds you and connects you and helps soften your heart. Maybe he will he will, you know, take this cookie and soften his heart and yeah. change his mind. Yeah. So, yeah, I know I, I, I said, you know, these two things don't make sense altogether, but you feel it's over, but you hope. Yeah. You feel and know it's over, but you hope that this action will change their mind. So that's when he rejected me. Where's this guy now? So he's still in the country that we were born in mm-hmm. and he still hasn't left. So he's still where he was. And this is years later. He's still in the same place I found him. So I was never going to change him. He was never going to change for me. He is still fat and he's still toxic and he's still where I found him. But I've moved on. How do you know all of this stuff about him? Well, I've got my sources. Yeah, my sources in the sense that, okay, he is blocked, right, on my WhatsApp. But when I go on my blocked list and I open the thing, I still see his picture He's still wearing the things I bought him when I was still seeing him. He's still wearing the same things and his body still looks the same on his profile pictures. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
Can I tell you the vibe that I get? Yes, please. I get the vibe you're still upset with this guy. And 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 I only say it because of the mm-hmm. tone and the manner in which you talk about him. I'm not upset about the guy. I am upset about not following my intuition. It makes me literally angry just thinking of the time I wasted when I knew that even though I felt a magic inside, yeah. I knew that mm, the probability that we will ever be compatible is is zero to none. Like, yeah. but I still. So I am. I regret the time that I wasted, okay. and the, the fact that I was blind to even see that this is not, this is not for me. So yeah. I regret the time, and I regret opening the door to such toxicity. But but I'm not angry. At the person, because mm-hmm. they've always been like that. Yeah, they've not yeah. changed over a decade. They will always be like that. I don't yeah. know when they will change. Yeah. But the fact that I wasted my time and my effort, you know, flying back and forth, yeah. you know, going to f- introduce families, you know, taking a person to your relatives, you mm-hmm. know, and being out there in public with this person and people see you and they think you're a fool. Yeah. And, and, and th- you know, just, just my reputation, my reputation... Yeah. Diminishing my reputation, diminishing my emotional stability, and also my finances. Also, spending money going up and down. You're there, and you know you're somebody who's broke. You're with someone who's broke. Yeah. So obviously, yeah. you will cut them some bread, and it was just, it was, I wasted my resources and my time and my body to give that person my body again. Yeah. So I felt I robbed myself. How long has it been since you broke up? So it's been. Two years now. Okay. Have you found someone so a else? A good two years. A good two years. Have you found someone else? Um, no, I have not. Okay. And uh, the guys who are approaching you, does their physical description matter? Do you want an athletic guy? <laughs> I've always wanted athletic men. Mm-hmm. As in athletic in the sense, it doesn't have to be I just want healthy men and a belly for a man who's in his 30s doesn't make sense for me. Yeah. You are either unhealthy, always in the fast food places, or you maybe you have a health condition or you're an alcoholic mm-hmm. or a couch potato. There's always something to it. So I want a man who is fit and takes care of his health because I'm also going to be a couch potato if he's a couch potato. And perhaps, and perhaps the last question for you. Yes. Are you looking for a ready-made man or you're prepared to make a man the one that you want him to be? I would prefer to have a ready-made man, but that is difficult for the ages I'm looking for. If I'm looking for somebody up to the age of 35, yeah, Mm -hmm. between 30 and 35, um, yeah, maybe they might not be ready-made, but I want... I, I'm I'm okay with building with a man, but I want a man whose vision is already in motion. Mm-hmm. I want a man who already has a path, like where he's the path he's going should be clear already. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He should not put himself in my hands to decide his fate. Yeah, I want a man who already knows who's the captain of his ship, who knows where his life is going and where I fit in it, despite the resources. But I prefer ready-made. But if it's not ready-made, it better have direction. Wow. I mean, I, I have to say that you're, you're very focused. You know exactly what you want. And I think you, you have it very clear. And uh, any guy who's going to be with you is not going to be in any form of doubt in terms of what you want and what you're looking for. And that's a great quality to have. Most definitely. Yeah. Like, I'm not looking for playing and having fun. I want to know the intentions of the person. My intention are dating for marriage. That's the mm-hmm. only reason I would date someone. So if anybody's not interested in dating me for marriage, then they should not even approach me. Wow. So they have to know I'm the one. They want to wife and where I fit in. And then, you know, we discuss it. Yeah. But I'm not going to date and walk in the park and travel through countries Wasting my time and my yeah. resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Well, well, thank you very much. That was um, that that was very high energy, very very intriguing, very interesting. Uh, th- thank you so much for for making You're time welcome. to uh, to share your story. For those who've been listening to this episode, four key lessons came out. Um, first and most important of all, if somebody tells you who they are, you best believe them because there's a good chance 
that is not going to change over time. Ten years came uh, between uh, these high school sweethearts and that did not make a difference. Second lesson, if you were rejected in the past, it won't change. You'll probably be the same rejected person you were ten years ago. And um, if something is happening, pay attention to what your gut is saying. And this is a theme that comes up in a lot of the episodes. Your gut is more than just your best friend. It is easily your livelihood. And then the last one is beware of toxic people because once they are toxic today, they're going to be toxic for a very long time. And if by any chance you are interested in Aminata, I have to tell you, you have to come as a ready-made man and do not have no belly. <laughs> Correct. Well said. Or lose the belly. <laughs> uh, you've been listening to another Feeling Station episode. I'm your host, Tinto, and I look forward to catching you next week. Peace. Tell me what you're feeling. Tell me what you're feeling. Now that it's over. Tell me what you're feeling. Let me talk about my feelings. Let me talk about my feelings. Uru doi motor no to kujitiru amai Kujitiru amai, love is a fire Uru doi motor no to kujitiru amai